Hello, I'm Danny Marcus, and I play Harriet Smith, and oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, do I love this show. I love this show so much that I've been doing it for 12 years and counting. A girl can hope. So Paul Gordon asked me if I would tell you all the story of Emma from my perspective. And when Paul Gordon asks you to do a thing, people, you just do it. So allow me to take you back. It's 2006 at the TheaterWorks Silicon Valley New Works Festival. Oh, and just so you know, this festival has great significance for me. It was there that I met the love of my life, who incidentally is filming this video. You can't see him, but he's very handsome. And it was there that I did the first workshop of Paul Gordon's Emma. It was a theater actor's dream. I mean, just imagine you're in the delivery room for the birth of this newborn baby musical called Emma. And the show was in pretty good shape to begin with, but Paul Gordon and the show's director, Robert Kelly, they wanted to know who had the best idea, the funniest idea in the room. And so we all felt like we were a part of this creative process. It's not always like that, but this time it really was. Oh, and this cast, we had the exquisite Leanne Marie Dobbs creating the role of Emma and really forming what that character would become. We had, oh, my dear, dear friend, Suzanne Grodner, who was delicious as Miss Bates in almost every regional production. Oh, and of course, everybody's MVP, Mr. Brian Herndon, who would play Mr. Elton in the whole shebang. These were the people who would become like family to me. Later that year, we took the show to New York for the National Alliance for Musical Theater Festival, where Paul had to cut the show down to 45 minutes, but it still slayed. And this was a particularly fangirling week for me because in the role of Mr. Knightley was Brian Darcy James. <sighs> I only got to work with him for one week, but henceforth I was to refer to him as Boyfriend Darcy... Brian Darcy James. Brian Darcy James. In 2007, TheaterWorks presented the world premiere production of Emma. I couldn't believe my luck that Kelly decided to keep most of his workshop cast intact, although that was when Tim Gulan, tonight's incredible Mr. Knightley, decided to join us. And we also had as our musical director the amazing Billy Libertor. It was time to roll up our sleeves and get to work. I want to tell you that when I first read Harriet Smith on the page, I knew her like an old friend. I did. I knew how she sounded. I knew what made her cry, what made her blush. I knew she was for me, and I just wanted to be worthy of her, to work hard enough so that I could play her as Paul Gordon and Jane Austen intended. Oh, and when I first tried on those Regency gowns with the authentic underslip, I felt like a princess. Although I will tell you that in that production I was blonde, people, not cute. I digress. The more important thing I tell you about this production is that it broke all box office records. TheaterWorks really has a knack at developing great new musical theater. They didn't win the Tony Award for nothing. In 2008, we took Kelly's show and we did a co-production with Cincinnati Playhouse in the Park and The Rep of St. Louis. And we added some delightful new members to our cast, including the brilliant Richard Easley as Mr. Woodhouse. So my favorite memory of this production happened during a statewide blackout in Ohio. It was um, Sunday matinee, half hour call, and the theater loses its power. So the legendary artistic director Ed Stern comes backstage and says, we're going to cancel the show, we're going to refund the tickets, but we had another idea. And Ed Stern, amazing man that he was, decided to listen to our scheme, which was to do this impromptu radio play version of the show. About 400 people decided to stay even though there was no AC. and. What they saw was a performance with no set, no lights except for generator lights over them and battery-operated candelabra sort of lighting us and, oh, our intrepid, amazing music director, Laura Berquist, was playing the piano with a miner's light on her head and we were making it up as we went along. I gotta tell you, it was two and a half of the most exciting hours I've ever spent in a theater. And not only that, it was it was one of my favorite days of my whole life. I remember just about everything about it, and I feel so lucky to have been there on that day. 
In 2011, the show went to the Old Globe Theater in San Diego. Ugh, oh, what a production. At the helm, we had director Jeff Calhoun, such a great storyteller, and what a get we had as our music supervisor and orchestrator, Maestro Brad Hawk, and a largely new cast, including some Emma favorites, Adam Daveline as my Mr. Robert Martin, and as the esteemed Frank Churchill, Will Reynolds, a very good looking and dashing and noble young man indeed. But our leading lady, Patty Murin. Boy, were we blessed to have her for this production. She was hilarious, charming, and so lovable in a role that even Jane Austen said was not always so easy to love. Oh, in this set, this was the kind of set that made an audience gasp aloud and was like a playground for the actors to work on. Truthfully, I never wanted this production to close. And maybe that was in part because in this production, I was brunette. Dreams can come true after all. In 2012, we had a lovely production with Arizona Theatre Company with yet another leading lady, the sly, stunning, and sassy Annalisa Vanderpool. It just goes to show that this show always attracts the best of people. And in 2015, the show was remounted in its birthplace, Theatre Works. The show was back in the loving formative hands of Robert Kelly, and it reunited its stars, Leanne Marie Dobbs and Tim Gulan. I would tell you so much more about it, but it's the one I wasn't in. But I do know that it once again broke box office records and it allowed the Emma Mishbucha to adopt Sharon Reed Kirk, the silver voiced Sharon Reed Kirk as Jane Fairfax, and the endearing Lauren Coco Cohn as Miss Bates. And that brings us to here Emma, the hybrid of stage and film. I was so honored to be a part of this maiden voyage of streaming musicals. And we had this cast of Emma All-Stars who worked hard and worked fast. But we were all so inspired by our new leading lady, Kelly Barrett. You know how amazing she was in the role, but she had a die-hard work ethic and she was really our leader on set. She was a dream. Not to mention the invaluable additions of Pamela Winslow Kashani, Don Richard, and Caitlin Brooke. I miss you guys. This, this experience was really interesting for me because, you know, I've been doing the show, I know it so well, but suddenly there's no audience. There's no laughter. What do you do? We were on a stage, we had theatrical lighting, but it was really more like being on a film set, and I learned so much. Not to mention that hair and makeup didn't hurt either. Oh, and this time, Harriet got a headband. Well, that's my story. On a personal note, I just want to say thank you to all of you out there watching, because now you're part of the journey too. I cannot imagine my life without this beautiful show, without my friendship with Paul Gordon, or any of the people that I've worked with and met along the way. I just want to say thank you to all of you. You know who you are. And to everyone out there, stay safe, Stay sane and uh, enjoy Act Two. Hey, I'm Paul Gordon, and it's an honor tonight to bring you the musical of Emma. Emma is a musical that was built to be streamed. It was filmed in two weeks in a theater, no audience, live singing, and we shot it like a movie and cut it like a film. We're calling this the soundstage musical, which is sort of a hybrid between a film musical and a theater piece. And we're very thrilled tonight to gift Emma to the community during this crisis. But also know that you can rent or purchase the movie tomorrow, and that part of your streaming dollar actually goes to the artist that created the film. We believe that theater artists should receive lifetime royalties for their work, the same way TV and film actors do. And, you know, this streaming is not meant to replace live theater, but it is an opportunity to supplement it and potentially transform it. Besides, not everybody lives in New York, Chicago, Boston, or wherever the show is playing. This is a way for theater artists to share their work with people all over the world and create new revenue streams that work for theaters, producers, and artists alike. So um, support us, support our model, and I hope you enjoy them. All right, guys, well, intermission is over, and this is your last mm. chance to join that cast party after the show. So go to emmamusicalpremiere.com to get your Zoom link to attend the cast party afterwards. Kelly's going to be there answering yeah. your questions with the whole cast. It's going to be awesome. awesome.
Jinx. 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 Okay. Okay. This is um, we're gonna show trailers of our next show up, which is Mary Harry, VN Cox that we just talked to. That's premiering on May 22nd. Can't wait. Grab more popcorn. You need to Oh, and don't forget wine. the one. Oh no. Bye. I've gotta get more. All right, we'll see you at Act Two. Bye.